there's the bear. They call him Daddy. I should probably turn off that that screen thing. All right, what's up, guys? How's it going? Uh, we are here. I am hanging out with Mister Lethal Lethal Coils over here. You guys can see he's got his own badass logo sitting right underneath him and all that. Again, thank you for sending me that because that makes my life easier. Uh, it's easier to ask somebody send me your logo than trying to like find a picture of it and then trying to clean it up on Photoshop and all that kind of thing. Mm. Yeah, seriously. Making a PNG is no fun. No, it's not. <laughs> it, it can be, but then like I'm, I'm like it's more work. Yeah, it, you start doing so much, you're like, why? <laughs> right. And when you have a guest that actually has a transparent PNG logo, it just makes everything so much oh, easier. Yeah. So and that and you get it from them, so they already have that clean version and all that kind of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Yeah, for sure. All right. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk some coil building since you know, like I said, this is a DIY and involves everything. And we were even chatting about coil building and making aliens and all that kind of thing before starting the show. That part of the conversation you guys got to see for like a brief second when I hit live on the thing. <laughs> and there was like there's no sound. Oh, fun stuff. That was like Dango Clax, yeah. Dango Clax. I, I think Dango Clax should be like the universal vaping name for when we mess up on videos and things like that. Technical difficulties, yeah. It's it's, Hashtag. A, it's a fun word. It is. Yeah, for sure. All right, so uh, we're gonna do the atypical, uh, you know, what I've been vaping thing. So we're gonna jump into that little guy. All right, I'm going to let you go as my guest. I'm going to let you go first and uh, show us off what, what you got going on over there. I see an overpowered. Right on. <laughs> yes, sir. We've got that overpowered 21700 stacked with the Twisted Meshes TM24 Pro on top there. Love that. Still need to get my uh, my rear end and Eclipse cap there, but oh, they're we nice. got they're that nice. repping. They're nice. And, uh, look at that. Oh, look at that. Yeah, on top of the, the timekeeper. I'm a little jelly. Yeah, so I won't cool. even lie. <laughs> <laughs> can anyone hear what they're saying? Okay, they can hear us. All right. Um, and in that, I've got some infused liquids, mocha jabape, which is a mocha, a Irish jelly. cream, and espresso blend. <laughs> Very nice. Then we've got the VCP. Uh, you can't really see. There we go. The VCP, the v, uh, Vapors Cloud Piglet with the original 22 millimeter Twisted Messes RDA on top Ooh, there. Nice. I really like it, man. Um, actually, to be honest with you, I like that Piglet better than I like my Noisy Cricket. I have the, the, that, the OG Twisted Messes too. <laughs> yes. That, it's an awesome RDA, seriously. Even this I've had it for about a week. And I love it. Yeah, even, like for how old of an RDA it is, it's still an amazing RDA. Like, Kent, oh, absolutely. Kent knew what he was doing, seriously. Um, what is up next? I got only a couple more here. We've got the drag with the Hell Beast tank on top there and running that 0.7 Aspire coil um, mouth to lung with 24 milligram Nick Salt uh, PB and Jam Monster Strawberry. Repping in that. Mm -hmm. We got the Noisy Cricket V3, the Luxotic NC with the Equitas RDA on top. And then finally, my last and most classy setup that I own, the Dot Mod 300 watt LiPo with the Dead Rabbit RTA and the dual color top cap. Dude, that gold, right. that gold Dead Rabbit looks sweet on there, to be honest. It, dude, it matches up perfectly with the... Mm -hmm. I didn't even realize that those were 24 karat gold plated. Oh, okay. Those, Crazy. The buttons and everything. So, but I like that. And uh, in that, I'm running some monkey nuts. Won't focus, of course. But uh, there's that. And then I just finished off a bottle of Blazberry. And yeah, really, mm, it's easy to go through a bottle of that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I tore through a bottle of Blaz Mango already. So, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what I'm vaping on. So, um, Go for right. it, buddy. Yeah. So uh, as you guys saw, of the uh, since this is a DIY show, the uh, Dull Dime number forty with the Twisted Messes and uh, that Money Dough uh, DHD drip tip. Just thought that that whole setup looks really cool. And as always, just living in there. Uh, deep cuts from uh, 
Mr. Vinyl and Vapor, some Psycho Curler right there. Oof. Yeah, dude, it's good juice. And uh, yeah, next we're going to go with this guy, the uh, Bunker RDA with the Arc Mod. Just love this whole setup. Uh, I put like a smaller, like a low ohm build on here, like a single coil, but it's still low ohm and it's kicking butt, dude. And then that I got from my line, uh, Super Serial. I'm really enjoying that whole situation. And as you guys saw it already, the Twisted Messes uh, Pro with the Eclipse Cap on my Timekeeper. And uh, in that, I got Nillionaire Mango. Really good stuff. Really enjoyable. All right. Uh, let me run through and do a uh, quick uh, shout outs and stuff like that. Uh, let's see. We got Erica Vapes. How are you doing? Uh, awesome moderator uh, from the moderating team on Vaping with the Omis. Raven Shadow Vapes. How are you? Toro Holman. Uh, yeah, Lethal had no sound for a minute there. <laughs> Still the funniest <laughs> thing ever. Uh, 808 Reckon Ghost. How are you doing, buddy? How's everything going? I think he's out of the UK, right? Or they're out of the UK? Not sure. Not sure. Yeah, I think I've seen him on uh, some of the, the UK uh, chats and stuff like that. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm not. I don't know. Uh, Mrs. Clanet, thank you for joining us. She's she's watching us from work and all that kind of thing. Then uh, Vaping with Ken. How are you doing, buddy? How's everything at the shop holding up? Then uh, Drip Vibe Vapor and... Yeah, that's everybody. How are you? How's everybody doing? All right. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, let's talk some DIY. Let's jump into this bumper and then we'll get to it. All right. Yeah. Thanks for uh, putting your, your YouTube channel link on there. I was going to suggest it here in a minute. But, yeah, this right. is uh, Lethal Coils, Mr. Lethal Coils. Uh, awesome dude. Got to meet him at NVE. Uh, it was like kind of brief, but even then, it was awesome to meet you in person. So, kind of have more of a of like an interhuman relationship. But he's also uh, he has his own YouTube channel. He just dropped the link in there and uh, go check him out. Seriously, good stuff over there. Good stuff. Uh, but yeah, uh, you want to give us a little bit of your vaping background and all that type of situation? Sure. <clears throat> what are we going on now? Um... Just about three years I've been vaping now. Um, I started out uh, about two weeks after my wife had started vaping, and it was her decision uh, that really kind of kicked me into it. Once mm -hmm. uh, she brought home her first vape mod, uh, which let me remember, it was a pen style um, kit of some sort. Yeah. But then I started with my uh, smock stick V8 kit. And then from there, I just. Uh, learned as much as I could because I was watching so many YouTube videos and reviewers and coil builders. Uh, cause when I went into the vape shop, my first time, my eyes were really on drippers. They were on rebuildables. And so, um, before I got into any of that, I wanted to start with something easy and, uh, take my time and learn what I needed to learn. And, uh, I just buried myself in, vaping reviewers and, and coil building and uh, quickly graduated from the smock stick V8 up to uh, recoil and what was it? The Wismac Predator 228. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have yeah. the, the five, uh, the 510 issue that everybody else did? No, I had other issues with it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, it was not the best of mods to be fair, but yeah. for someone like as a, as a newbie? Yeah, as a newbie, it was all right yeah. to box mods. Um, yeah. Again, I viewed it as kind of like the same with a, I, the same way I see smock is like they're disposable. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. a way, yeah. you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, like Wesmax, smock, uh, what other companies? There's a couple where like a lot of that stuff is just like very short right. term. It's not meant to hold, yeah. hold you up. Some of the Sigelis, yeah. some of the Sigelis, the Chaos, for example. Yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of view those. They're in, they're inexpensive, and if they break, you can easily go back out and and pick up a new one. Yeah. So, uh, but from there, I ended up actually going back to smoking for about a year, and then on March thirtieth of last year, I just passed um, my one year vape anniversary. But on March thirtieth of last year, I actually made the decision uh, that I was done. 
I was done. And that day I crushed up my last pack of butts, tossed them in the garbage. And ever since then I've been straight vaping. Um, so that, that's, uh, and I, I've really, really buried myself with coil building for a, quite a while. Um, but yeah, then I started, uh, when I decided I was going to quit smoking on March 30th of 2018, I decided I was going to do, um, I wanted to share what it was like for me mm -hmm. going through that transition. And, uh, so from the first day I decided to quit smoking, uh, up to 30 days later, I did a, a vlog of the first 30 days of, you know, quitting smoking and, and how it was for me. It's not going to be the same for everybody, but this is just my journey through quitting smoking. And I wanted to share that with other people. So I decided I was going to do a vlog. Wasn't really expecting it to go anywhere, but I got such a big reception from it that I was like, all right, we're done with the first 30 day vlog. Let's just try to keep going with some little like morning show kind of thing. And so I started with some coffee and coils, which was me generally was me making breakfast, having coffee and just shooting the, shooting the breeze with whoever was in the chat at the time. Mm -hmm. And uh, then some people had made the suggestion, well, why don't you try a video? So I decided I was going to, and I gave it a shot at reviewing and I was like, you know what, this is a lot of fun. I'm going to keep going with this too. Mm -hmm. So, um, but that's really where, where I have been at, um, you know, that it's been a long road. It's been a fun road and yeah. it, it's been a hell of an adventure. Oh, yeah. Met a lot of good people, uh, a lot of solid people, um, made some really good friends and made a, a, I don't want to say made a name for myself. A lot of people know me on the UK vape community scene. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's really been, um, it's been uplifting to see the community really pull together like they do, you know, and oh, yeah, really support sure. everybody else. Yeah. That tends to be like a big positive about this. And like, uh, on, uh, I don't know if you listen, but like, uh, we do the wolf bite show on uh, vape radios. And mm -hmm. since it's May, we are actually doing a mental health awareness month and that's all we're talking about and stuff like that. And I feel that like the vape community, like as human beings, we always look for our tribe, something we can grasp onto, whether we either want to be that lone wolf or not. We still look for that tribe of people that can like have our mindset or know where we're coming from on certain ideology and, mm. and vaping. That one commonality brings so many people from different aspects of life together and we could just like help out each other i mean i get several questions of like hey what do i do for this build or how do you make that juice and things like that i'm like oh you just da da da, da you know just depending on the question yeah and it's one of those things of i started out as a newbie and i still remember when i was first building coil builds and things like that uh that's around the time when like a lot of this stuff was on youtube and like facebook groups weren't that big yet and they were just starting out and things like that and it's interesting seeing people actually like want to help you, not direct you in the wrong way. Absolutely. It's a very interesting thing. I'll be honest. Absolutely. And it's funny you mentioned the um, mental health awareness thing because uh, me and a buddy of ours, mm -hmm. um, you, Mike, you know, Mike mm -hmm. and him and I were talking, I was like, how, how cool would it be to get a bunch of the guys together and actually do just like a, a mental health awareness, suicide prevention awareness yeah. charity stream? that would be absolutely dope yeah and i, I don't know if uh ken and uh michelle are doing theirs again like they did last year but did you catch that at all last year i did i was actually a part of oh, yeah, um, yeah. Part I remember, of that one. yeah there were so many people coming in and out of that i don't even remember who was on when and all that kind of thing <laughs> and even trying to like do your day-to-day -day while trying to keep up with that was just like insanity but <sighs> It's really hard when you got a 24-hour live stream going on and, and everyday life takes precedence you know yeah. you you can't oh, yeah. beat it the whole time. Yeah, because I was like, uh, I jumped in Saturday morning because it was my night off and I had fallen asleep early. So then I got up early. So I jumped in like around 3.30 in the morning. I was just <laughs> like, hey, I'm up. What do you guys need from me? <laughs> <laughs> it was like the weirdest thing ever. And we were all like, then my wife came on because she woke up because like ambulances showed up outside and there was like noise and stuff going on in the background and i'm like i am so sorry you just see red lights flashing in front of my face constantly it, was, it, it made for for good content i guess but 
Absolutely. And that's the good thing about live, like charity streams like that, the 24 hour streams is that it's very laid back and relaxed. Like people can pop in and out oh, yeah. and, you know, but anyways, that's a, a totally different show from what you run. So, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. But Hey, that, like I said, that again, that's one of those weird things of like, as a vaping community, we, uh, we tend to come together for other things that have nothing to do with vaping, you know? Like they affect us as humans, but it has nothing to do with vaping, but we still come together for these things and do so much with it. And to me, that's been like one of those weird, like, wow, this is, this is something. It is. It really is. Yeah. All right. Oh, you're good, man. You're good. Uh, Post and link. <laughs> there we go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> All right, what's up, uh, Vape for Life? Uh, I saw, was it Vaping Smurf, Minnesota Clouds? How are you guys doing? Dude, I'm just trying to make sure I don't miss anybody here. Yeah, uh, absolutely. If you guys have any questions for for Mr. Lethal Coils here, don't don't be shy. Drop them in the in the chat there. We're we're paying. I'll bite. I promise. <laughs> unless you want them to. Yeah, unless you <laughs> ask me nicely. <laughs> So you're talking about getting into coil building and stuff like that. Uh, how did that journey go for you? Uh, it went well. Um, it's like I tell anybody that, that asks me about getting into coil building. Uh, I started exactly the same way that I give advice. And that's, uh, you got to start with the very, very basics. You got to start with from the very beginning and work your way up yeah. without yeah. the basics without the fundamentals, you won't be able to build the higher, more intricate builds, more complex and exotic coils mm -hmm. at all. You, you need these basics in order to do that. Whether like for me, uh, obviously it started with round wire wrapping coils that way. Yep. Uh, and then from there I moved into twisted wire. Uh, from that I moved into Clapton's. Yeah. Uh, and then from there I grew the amount of cores for my Clapton's making fused Clapton's. Um, and then I, I, once I got up to like three core fused Clapton's, I was like, you know what? It's, it's time. Let's try my hand out at some aliens. And, uh, it took me a while and a lot of wasted wire, but, um, eventually I came across a day, uh, I had given up the night before and I, <clears throat> Thank you, Raven. Uh, I'd given up the night before, came back to it the next day, uh, the very next morning, and I railed out my first alien like that, and I damn near shot through the roof. <laughs> you know, it was one of those um, huge feeling of accomplishment. Oh, yeah. Um, you know what I mean? So uh, it's like, wow, look what I did. Kind of, I can't believe I finally did it. And, um, but that's, that's really what happened. Uh, for me was just starting with the basics and moving my way up. Um, start easy, never start harder. Yeah. You know, I, I've tried working with some ribbon wire and stuff and I, I'm, I'm no expert coil builder. I can, I can make some good aliens. Um, but I've tried working with ribbon wire and, and making staples and frame staples. It doesn't work out well for me. <laughs> yeah. Like I'll I'll be honest, staples I can't do worth a damn. They just the, the course twist up really bad. But frame staples, I'm just too lazy to do them. But I actually got in the hang of those pretty well. Uh, Have you? Yeah, just I I don't know. Those are meant more for like just bragging rights in all reality. Because like a triple core is just more than it enough, doesn't. Personally. I haven't found that they vape any any better than an alien. To be honest with you, yeah, you know, like a well built alien. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I just, uh, it's one like, of those Instagrammer coils. Yeah, it is. And like, that's one of those one like things that like, I'll see all these crazy builds on Instagram and I'm like, but how does it vape? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, like, a lot of that's for like things like coil wars. Yeah. Oh yeah. And that stuff is awesome. I love seeing that. Yeah. I miss, uh, I miss Josh doing the videos cause well now it's, um, and divine 83. Oh, is it really? Okay. Yep. I didn't know he took over coil wars. As far as I know, he has. Uh, I know the last one I watched, he was doing uh, doing the, the competition. So oh, Okay, cool. I'm going to have to for sure check him out because I'm sub to him, but I don't really like watch his videos all that often because he's like at a different time schedule than I'm in. 
the jerk knew I was at NVE and he didn't even come over and say hi. <laughs> really? I, I love him though. I, uh, I didn't even know he was there. I had no clue. Neither that would have been. I. That would have been cool to meet him because yeah, I've been following the dude for a bit. Oh, can I just tell you, it was such, such an honor at NVE being able to meet M Turk. It blew my mind. Um, He's such he was, a chill guy too. Like it's insane how relaxed he is. Even the yep. way he talks, he's so calm and mellow. It's oh, between dude. him and uh, Eric Vinyl and Vapor on who talks the most mellow. Right. Yeah. Well, I got a picture with him and Ruby Rue at the same time. I, he, when I asked him, he was just so easy to do it. Like it was absolutely not a problem. Yeah. Oh, man, what a good guy he is. But he's like one of those guys that I started watching from the get go. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was like, I, I want to do what he does. Yeah. You know, I want to do that. I want to yeah. make those. And uh, so he was definitely one of my largest inspirations for can you tell really... he's an inspiration of mine too <laughs> <laughs> he, he really was the driving force uh behind my motivation to yeah. uh get to the point where i could build a solid alien oh no yeah i'm turk he's a he's a very stand-up guy like seriously mm -hmm. like meeting him in person and stuff like that was pretty cool and like like if you would do a post of anything he sells, like his coils or his juice, he'll actually DM you and be like, Hey, thanks for the support, man. And it's like, and it's like, no, thanks need him. And like, seriously, I just do no, exactly um, like what you make. I mean, Turkish harvest did not last me long enough. I need to buy yep. more <laughs> credit where credit's due. My yeah, friend, pretty much. That's just how it falls, you know? Mm. But, yeah, dude, there's a, uh, I like, I'm trying to like uh, think because I when I started building coils it was like three four years ago, and um, yeah, I, I, like you were saying, you need to learn your fundamentals and don't make the mistakes I made because I, I, I don't walk, I don't learn how to crawl, I learn how to run right away, and I went from round wire to trying to make fuse Claptons, and that that was a a battle all itself. And honestly, if I would have just gone to Claptoning first, that probably would have been a lot easier to just get that idea down. Mm. It, it a lot of people um i've had asked me about um how to make like these aliens and these fuse claptons and i'm like well have you have you started with the basics yet i mean like you got to get those down and get those techniques down before you can move on because these fundamentals really are the building blocks for about every other build you can think of yeah you know um Aliens use a claptoning technique twice over. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you've got um, frame staples use claptoning techniques. Mm -hmm. You, know, you got to learn how to lay out your wire. And uh, another thing that uh, is huge for coil building, huge, huge, huge. Take as much time as you need to prep. T all the prep time in the world that you need. The more time you spend prepping your wires and prepping your, your equipment, the easier the build is going to go for oh, yeah. you. A lot of it is prep time. A lot of it is prep time. Like that's, mm -hmm. that's one of those things of like, take your time. Don't try to rush it. And, um, cause even like frame staples, it's one of those weird ones where like trying to get, like get everything set up properly. And once you get that set up, the rest of it just really falls into place so easily. Oh, it really does. Mm -hmm. It really does. It helps so much. And you're amazed. Cause like when you, like, I know if I'm making like a set of frame staples, once I get into it, I knew if I rushed it or not because it'll start fucking turning around like shit, and I'm like, oh, okay, yep. I guess I messed up somewhere. I tell you, you're gonna you're gonna spend a good amount of time in preparation, but when you do spend enough time in preparation, you get everything set up just right. It's gonna go by so easy, and you'll be like, and that's why we need to work on prep. Oh yeah, pretty much. Right there is why. Yep, for sure. And practice, practice does make perfect. Like seriously, just it does. Like I said, I went through so much wasted wire mm -hmm. when I started learning how to do my aliens that it it wasn't even funny. It was disgusting. Oh yeah, um, it was just a gross waste of wire. Mm -hmm. But you know what? It's not wasted if it gives you practice. You know, if it if you learn something along the way, it's not wasted wire at all. Mm -hmm. No, yeah, for sure. That that's one of those weird things where. You're going to probably like use up a lot of wire trying to learn some of this stuff, but 
don't just give up entirely. If anything, just walk away from the project for a minute. So many times I've done that. So many times I've had to just, nope, I'm done. I can't, I can't be bothered. Oh yeah. Just amazing things. Uh, it is because you'll, you'll take time away and you'll come back to it. And it's like the first shot and you're bang on. Mm -hmm. And it's like, okay, don't get frustrated. Just be calm about it. And if you need to take time away, take time away. Oh yeah. Uh, like I'll say, I, I don't know, like if you would recommend this, but like, especially starting out, don't go for like the, the higher price wire, get something more like lower end, I guess. Like seriously, like yep. I, I started out on master of clouds. I don't know if they still sell that wire. I haven't touched it in years, but do you know, uh, lightning vapes? Yeah. I, yeah, dude, I love lightning vapes. Not going to lie. <laughs> all all of my wire is lightning vapes wire yeah. i've always used them <laughs> yep. yep yep yeah we're, we're i'm gonna have to show you a secret about getting lightning vapes wire after the show if you haven't done it already but uh but uh what's it called uh yeah they, lv social huh? lv social 17 yeah no 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 something else uh oh all right yeah <laughs> But yeah, like when it comes to all that, like start off like, cause like I like Kenny Puncher. Don't get me wrong. I like Coil Society, but their prices are a little too high to like buy just practice wire. And twisted like, messes. Twisted messes. Yeah. Like I, I still have yet to touch twisted messes wire. Uh, it's not bad stuff. Yeah. I will. Yeah. I just haven't used it. And I probably should have grabbed some at NVE because I know Kent had some and he probably had it like at a lowered price. But uh, yeah, there was a lot of booths I missed at NVE that I was like, I probably should have swung by there or at least looked at some stuff there was um uh, i i don't know i think i'm gonna have to contact the company there was a wire company there uh tnt wires really i don't know if you know that's that company no. uh, but they had uh given me a, a packet of 24 gauge nichrome 90 competition wire that says on the package it was fused but it's just round wire yeah and i'm like okay <laughs> this is not fused wire <laughs> but i've heard like some chinese companies have been putting out like things they claim to be aliens and they're actually just fused claptons <laughs> i have seen things come out of china that claim to be aliens but they're all twisted and i'm like that is not an alien <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a twisted wire if anything you know, yeah, cause I remember uh, when I first learned, like when I finally got fused Clapton's down, I was like, I wonder if what happens if you do a twisted core. It's pointless. <laughs> twisted yep. core uh, fused Clapton's are just kind of, eh, there's no point to them. No. 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 Uh, what was my latest uh, find in a build that I actually enjoyed was a uh, four core or four strand rather twisted mm -hmm. of um stainless steel yeah 20 28 gauge i think and uh then i would twist them together and i do that mirror finish mm -hmm. and i just run the the drill and use my my pliers and just kind of grind down that so it made much smoother finish and you didn't have the lumps all the way around it it made it just like a solid cable yeah uh, so i found those uh recently and they make very good, very, very good um, series builds out of those, too. So, hmm, I wonder. Uh, I'm not like a big stainless steel fan well, in all reality. I'm a Nichrome 80 guy mostly. Yeah, same here. Uh, I'm playing around with Nichrome you do the 90. same thing. Yeah, I've been playing with Nichrome 90 lately, and I'm, I don't know how I feel about it. It's got that, uh, that jumping. Super high ramp. Yeah, well, that and it has that jumpiness that like stainless steel does. That the warmer mm. it gets, the higher the 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 homage goes on it. So it's just kinda, right. It's a little bit. The thing annoying. is with that twisted build, though, you could do that with Nichrome eighty, and still get a, a good series build out of it, mm -hmm. and just use less wraps. Yeah. As we know, Nichrome eighty has a higher resistance than stainless steel does. Yeah. So you'd be able to use less wire and get a higher resistance than stainless. Oh yeah, for sure, sure. Yeah, let me see. My Twisted Messes Pro, this is a N90 one. Mm -hmm. And that still only came out at 0. 0.1. Nice. I was like, that is insanity. <laughs> How many wraps that ate up? 
also, uh, I just want to mention this in case anybody out there is uh, getting into uh, coil building. <clears throat> if you know you have a uh, allergy to nickel, and I, I, this, not a lot of people do, but there are people out there that have an allergy, uh, an allergic reaction to nickel. Yeah. Keep in mind that you can't use stainless steel either. Really? Because even stainless steel has a degree of nickel in it. So it's just canthal then? Right. Did right. not know that. All right. Good to know. Yeah. Things that uh, make you go, hmm. Yeah, no <laughs> kidding, dude. I didn't know it had like a degree of uh, nickel in there. That's, that's crazy. Yeah. So yeah, because yeah, I know canthal is for people that are for sure allergic. allergic. Yep. That's interesting. Interesting. You learn something new every day. If you're not learning something new every day, I um, I think you're doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. I think every day should have a, a life lesson in it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Something to learn. Yeah, like uh, when I tried stainless steel, I just didn't care for the flavor it gave and things like that. But I am mm -hmm. actually allergic to stainless steel. Like I have gauges in my ears. And if I have like a stainless steel plug in or something, it it'll start eating away at my ear. It's like the most grossest thing ever. Oh yeah. Like I actually, no. uh, is it this eyebrow? I have like, uh, I used to have a uh, eyebrow piercing like you do. Mm -hmm. And like the, the stainless steel ring they put through it, it just ate through the piercing and it just fell out one day. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. That's like the roughest thing ever. I was like, that, oh. that, like that was my first piercing. So I didn't know it yet. And then when I got my ears done, I started noticing it again and I'm like, maybe I'm just allergic. And I took them out, let them heal and then put a stainless steel plug in just to double check on that. And I was like, it's doing it again. Okay. So no stainless steel for this guy. <laughs> yeah. Yep. What did you get a, a tinny taste out of the, the yeah, stainless? Yeah. It was a little just bit, a weird yeah. taste. Just didn't care for it much. And a little metallic. Yeah. That and the jumpy resistance is just not like something I don't like. I like consistency. That's really like N80 I agree really, with you there. Really wins me out because it's very consistent. Right on. <clears throat> so, you guys got any questions? Any uh, anything you want to ask from Mister Lethal Coils? Ao Vape, what's going on, man? Hey, buddy. But, yeah. How did your guys' live go? That you were able to get it going? I completely missed it because I was recording. For a wolf bite, but hopefully you guys were able to do your live because uh, Ale and uh, Mike are doing their own live now. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah. I don't know why I forgot about that. I knew about it. But uh, yeah, that's basically my journey has been watching a lot of people um, that have done these ex just exotic coil builds. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I want to go that far with it. Mm -hmm. But I at least want to get to the point where I can make a solid alien. And uh, so, that I, yeah, I sell them uh, pretty much. I sell them exclusively to friends and uh, whatnot at this point because yeah. I've been spending a lot of my time has been taken up with uh, YouTube and the Facebook page and real life stuff. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I've been out of that game for a little while. And so, yeah. I mean, that was where I, I wanted to be. That's where I got to, and I, I'm happy with that. So those are the ones that I actually do sell are aliens, fused Claptons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't really, I don't really do Claptons because I mean, people can make them. Yeah. Those, you know what I mean? They don't take a whole lot to be honest. No. no. I, I don't know. Like Claptons to me, it's just one of those uh, coils that, just doesn't appeal to me i don't and i know there's like a round wire market and so so on and so forth but it's just one of those things that i don't see many people caring for claptons no vape vapes that that's not great man just be safe with it i mean if you have a nickel allergy just be careful bro yeah keep it safe yeah that's all just keep an eye out for it. Don't let it get too bad. Certain allergies but, are interesting. Yeah. Again, it's one of those use at your own risk kind of things. No kidding. No kidding, dude. 
Uh, I've been fortunate. I haven't had an allergy to any any type of metal. So actually, come to think of it, I don't have an allergy to pretty much anything, to be fair. Yeah, like I grew up in California, like an hour hour or so north of L.A. Okay. And uh, didn't have any allergies. We moved to Texas, all of the allergies. Oh, I take Zyrtec daily. <laughs> yeah, totally different environment. Oh, yeah, completely, dude. All that smog kept us safe from, from allergens. Right? Like, my brother lives in Nashville, and yeah. if I was to ever go there, the man, he goes, we're down the bottom of the valley. The air is so stale and stagnant, it's hell on allergies. I'm like, that makes total sense. <laughs> oh, yeah, because, like, even here when you watch the news, and they're doing the weather. The first thing they talk about is the allergens that are going to be in the air that day. <laughs> yep. It's like so and so amount of pollen, mold, da da da. It's like they go through the list, and it's like okay. It's like wear a surgeon's mask when you walk outside. Pretty much, pretty much. Oh. So and, yeah, no questions, guys. No, nobody wants to know anything. Nobody wants to know more. All right. Oh. Uh, what was I gonna, oh, there, oh yeah, uh, you were talking about dabbling a little bit on. Oh, actually, I wanted to make one point. If you are really serious about coil building, get a good drill to start off with. Don't cheap out on that because you're gonna you're gonna burn through it really fast, and then you're gonna end up having to buy another drill anyways. <laughs> another thing. That. Yep, another thing to watch for is not just a good drill. Make sure you're getting a drill with an RPM higher than five hundred. Yes. <laughs> I did that. That was my first drill was a 550 RPM cordless. And it took me forever to do anything. That is a nice is what is that a hammer drill? Uh, no, yeah, no, it's just a regular drill. To, uh, oh, you just got a jig on top. Yeah, I got a jig on top. But this is the rigid. This thing is badass and they only cost like 100 bucks. Seriously, they're not bad. I'm going to have to get one. I have a DeWalt, but it's corded. Uh, the only problem is I can't put it in my vice because of the shape of it. Yeah. It's all rounded. Yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't actually pinch into the Yeah. Ugh. But no, those are very cheap and they actually have a lifetime warranty. You just fill out the the thing and you it covers your battery as its own thing and the drill is its own thing. So if your battery burns out, you just send them the the claim and they'll replace your battery. Uh drip so vibe vapor. That is actually a very loaded question. Um, the best RDA for builders, uh, I can direct you to good, good ones. Uh, best is all really in the eye of the beholder. Um, what are you be looking fair. for in a vape is what it turns into. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but you've got great buildables like the TM 24 pro, yeah. for example. Um, my first one was the recoil, the original recoil. And that one was a good builder. Mm -hmm. Um, wire preference uh vape for vapor for life gen wire preference mine personally nichrome 80 all day yep, that's my preference much. and the, yeah an 80 uh brand wise i could care less but yeah an 80 that makes me happy yep yep i like the taste i get out of it i like how easy it is to work with and that's the other thing about coil building. There's so many different aspects about building that it's ridiculous. But mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that you have to watch for when it comes to building coils is what type of wire are you using? Mm -hmm. Because they all work very differently. Yeah. And um, the, some of them are stiffer wire. So you're going to have to have an easier amount of pressure, a lighter amount of pressure from your fingertips as you're wrapping the coil, mm -hmm. um, like for example, Canthal is the stiffest of the three wire types that I use. And it's a, it's when I go from making a Canthal alien to trying to make a uh, Nichrome 80 alien, I screw it up the Nichrome 80 because I have to put so much pressure on the Canthal wire that it's a little ridiculous. Yeah. Vapor for life. Jen says hers is Canthal. The drop dead is another good one. Yes. Yep. The drop dead, the drop, uh, dead rabbit, I think is a, a decent one. The dead goat. That, the dead goat. Yeah. That, that actually, I'm like, I actually like the dead rabbit, the drop dead. I had mixed feelings about, but the dead goat. Yeah. 
that that whole situation in there. I think Dwayne kind of took the go uh, the dead rabbit to that next level. That airflow that they have on there is just amazing. Uh, I have not used the Ocula uh, yet, but I've heard very good things about it. It's really nice. I'll say it is uh, personally, at least for me. Okay. And it's one of the weirdest things because a lot of people hate the Goon 1.5 because it's too airy. It's too open. Yep. This guy fully open is way too open. <laughs> really? Yeah. Like the... Wait, show that airflow up again. I have it is closed that... down one hole. Is that three in a, a little concave kind of formation? Yes. Let's see, I'll, I'll close if it off. One... If you think that, if you think that's airy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's the yeah. knucklehead. Yes, sir. Team knucklehead. <laughs> Knuckleheadvapes.com. Yeah, over in the UK. I have not tried any other products. Like, are they you still, owe it. Are they still making styled mods and things like that, or are they starting to move into their own? Their own well, they've products? been moving into their own. Here's their uh, signature mod, the Duster. Nice. Is it a 21700 or 18650? 18650. Solid brass. It's got... Uh, Beautiful little star-shaped knuckle duster uh, logo on the the star there. Mm -hmm. It's constant contact. Man, the thing hits like a dream, too. Ao, that is, again, a very loaded question. (laughs) So what is your favorite RDA of all time? Wait, did I lose lethal? All right, guys, give me a second here. <laughs> oh, did you? Michelle Lynn Dull Dime. Okay, we're back. This thing went dead for a second. Michelle Lynn, how are you? I still need to have her on the show. Yes. Uh, dying to try and get the M-Turk. He's on both sides, so I know it's a beaut. The M-Turk V2, I've seen very, very, very good things about that one as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. Still have to try one. I haven't even tried his original. Yeah. There we are. Okay. I was like, this thing, the delay on this is ridiculous. That annoys me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, you were talking about the knuckle duster and I lost you right at that point, man. Oh, sorry. It's all good. Um, which one? The, was I talking about the switch? Yeah, the switch. You were. I, oh, all right. Yeah, doing. it's um, constant contact, silver plated contact, magnet and uh, or not magnet. I'm sorry. No magnet, just spring spring action. Yeah. Um, but solid brass. They come in copper. And I think. Uh, copper and brass colored options as well but i mean it's not expensive i mean i think it's like 100 bucks right around 100 bucks uh and i think that it's worth it for the price that's actually um that's where i got my start from Mm -hmm. Uh, when i started doing my videos and everything i had um actually ralphie ralphie's reviews Mm -hmm. he was the guy i talked to that gave me some tough love and told me, you know what, man up and just quit smoking. And that was the day I was like, done, I'm done. And I decided I was going to start doing my videos. And uh, that's where a lot of my viewers came from was from the the Facebook group page. And uh, it just kind of grew from there. That's awesome, dude. 
Hey, you know, we all have stories, right? Yeah, what was yours? Uh, my story? Oh, dude. It involved my wife yelling at me a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I totally feel you. <laughs> no, no, okay. Like, um, okay. So I started vaping in 2012. I was a dual user for about two to three years until I discovered drippers. Yeah. And uh, right around that time, I was still like smoking heavily and vaping heavily. So it was a lot of just nicotine coming from all sides and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I I got uh, the Kanger sub box and that actually got me off cigarettes, but it still wasn't enough. Like it was one of those things where I was just fighting it the whole time. But uh, shortly after that, I met my my wife and we started dating and all this stuff and i got into coil building around that same time and i got to a point of like you know what i do this enough and i'm confident enough in my coils that i probably should start selling them and she's like well you should and i'm like well i don't know where to start and so like a half hour later she's like here's your site now put your coils on there fucker and i'm like dope yep. <laughs> and same happened with the youtube channel i was like i should start a youtube channel for diy stuff because uh, at the time, there wasn't as much DIY stuff out there. Like, uh, like Fresh O3 wasn't a thing yet. DIY or Die was kind of barely starting out. And, like, a couple of other guys. I would find some stuff, but it was so rudimentary that it didn't really help out a whole lot. They didn't. It was just very, hey, you put this and this and this, and that's it. it there was no explanation on the whys and how everything worked and things like that, you know? Right. Like, yep. I, that's why I love watching Wayne's videos because he gets so... Uh, like nothing on theory uh yeah there was nothing on theory because like it's one of those things of like creams you know you try to make a cream you can't just start vaping it right away it's gonna taste like garbage because half of those smell horrid when you get them out of the bottle yeah and then like, you gotta let it sit and steep for a while yeah and that was something that they they all just said just let it sit around for two weeks and then come back to it and it's like well why there was like none of that or how like certain flavorings can mask other flavorings or make them more uh, palatable it just turns into one of those weird things of like you know and you were telling me earlier you do a little bit of DIY yourself and things like that a little bit a little bit I do a little bit a little like bit. I, you and I were talking before uh, the show a little while and when it comes to DIY e-liquid and, and um, mixing pretty much I like I have a uh, entire DIY um, starter kit it comes with everything you need. Comes with like fifteen different flavoring concentrates. Uh, comes with a crap load of PG and VG. Mm -hmm. All the bottles and um, syringes with the the tips on them. It comes with everything. And yeah. the most that I've used it for was doing single flavors. Um, you know, just trying to get a feel for what each one's supposed to taste like by itself, and really kind of be able to see which flavors are going to blend well with others. Um, but that's about the extent of my, my e-liquid DIY stuff. No, oh, yeah. Uh, and that's when I was like, I was telling you, I think that actually is a good route to take is learning the flavors individually. Uh, I know I had lab works on last week. And one of the things he is really adamant about that you should learn is uh, learn what these things taste like in real life and how to make them like if you want to make like a pie flavor actually make a pie just take a couple minutes and t make an actual pie to like get just a basic understanding of where the flavors come from how they're supposed to work together and things like that and yeah toral holman says get a scale yeah scales are amazing they uh oh so you guys do them by milligrams oh yeah yeah oh see i've always done it by milliliters yeah the, the mixing by uh by weight is a lot easier to be honest because you don't waste you're you just seriously sit there bloop, 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 bloop. <laughs> yeah you know no sound effects but still uh, maybe i'll do a recording for people of the sound effects you can play when you're doing that <laughs> bloop, it's bloop, like grim green bleh. Bleh. i want to get my juice bleh your juice i can't blood juice because i over drip at that point <laughs> <laughs> i really do it's horrible it's like when you watch me on lives, I keep like looking down because I'm re-dripping and shit like that. <laughs> I do it too. All I right. do it. So far, what is it? The the Sonnet RDA has been the only RDA I haven't been able to overdrip. But other than that, everything just overflows, gets gurgly and disgusting, and it's bad. Toral, the dead goat 
I don't know, but the goat itself is great for squonking. Uh, it's the same thing. It comes uh, it comes out the top, right? Yeah, it comes out the top like the dead rabbit would. And puts it right over the coils. Yeah, and... Ah, uh, shit. I shouldn't have done that. I should have taken it off a different way. But uh, the deck itself actually comes apart. And it has a... You know, because it's a, the, the goat RDA. Placement coil heads, yeah. Yeah, but this guy... I'm trying to take it off. This guy, the the five ten pin right there, actually mm-hmm. comes out, and you switch that one out for the squonking pin. Right. Yeah. So you can have solid or non solid, which is really cool. Which I wish they kind of would have done that with the uh, with the regular goat heads, because those are just always constant squonking heads, basically. But I don't know. I, I like the vape they give. Hmm. Really do. Like I. I haven't used it too much, but uh, my buddy lent me his his goat. Mm. It doesn't have the dead goat deck on it. It's just got the original goat on it. Yeah. Um, but I've got it on the uh, the Rage Squonker, mm-hmm. and I, I'm loving it. I don't have batteries in here yet, though. There we are. Is it? Do you have a rage? No, I had one for a while there, but the the I had one of the ganky ones where the chip crapped out after a bit. Yeah, I got gotcha. you. I get this sense of like, I don't know. It makes me smile whenever I see. I turn it on. It says "Desire Design" come across the screen. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a uh, what is it? Uh, Cartel Revenant that oh, I, went, I went through it. Mods. I went through and uh, I changed out the logo for my logo. So when I turn it on, it says clown vapes. Because <laughs> <laughs> I am that vein of an asshole. Like, uh, let's see. Ah. Let's see, my logo's on my uh, my guardian. If it'll focus on it. Yeah, it won't focus. It's too bright. But yeah, my logo's actually on the, the DNA board there. Oh, wow. And I've been trying to figure it out for this. Oh, is that yeah. using that eScribe stuff? Yeah. Yeah, I I did that with the Triad DNA two fifty. Yeah. Was it uh I used to have the 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 Wismec Relos, mm-hmm. and then um a buddy of mine bought one off of me because I was I wasn't using them anymore, and I was like, you know what, might as well make a couple bucks off of them. So I sold one to my buddy, and he's a big uh, Raiders fan. So I put a uh, Raiders, yeah. I put a Raiders logo on there for him, and he tripped out when he saw it. He's like. Why is there a Raiders logo on this thing? I was like, because you could customize it, buddy. And he's like, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> like, I did that for you. I wouldn't do it for anybody else, man. Oh, man. Yeah, he must have been stoked to see that. Oh, yeah. And then like a week later, he's like, all my friends are asking me if you can make more mods for them. I was like, I don't make the mods. I just change out the logos. <laughs> if you have them buy buy the mod, I'll, make, I'll change out the logos for them. But other than that, I can't really do much. Box modding is another thing I've been been wanting to get into. It's just laziness at this point. My buddy Sean Beasy does that, yeah. but uh, I haven't I haven't dug into box modding at all. Yeah, I'll leave that to the experts, Michelle. Right? Oh, Michelle, she does an amazing job. Seriously, this thing hits hard. Uh, Throw some twenty S's in there. Yeah, just amazing. Twenty S. God damn, I love those batteries. Me too, dude. But I only really use them in my mechs. Yeah. Same. Just here. the low, the low ma rating on them is really off-putting when it comes to regulated. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. It just feels like it was a battery designed more for for mechanical mod vaping. Oh yeah, that's how, like the the LG Dudu Browns are still like the the top for for regulated 18650s because they still have the highest mod rating any battery has. It's just can't build super low on those. Absolutely. I have those somewhere around here too, and I just can't remember where. But I have some of those uh, HP6s. Any other questions, guys? Uh, Vape Vape says he still loves his Druga RDA when he, he had it when it came out, still uses it. I have one. I have mixed feelings on it, to be honest. I don't know how to feel about it. 
but I have one. I got one. They were doing like a clearance sale on some site, and I got it for like ten bucks. That's uh, that's way I got my the Stentorian Motofo Ram box because I I like my squonkers too. Yeah, no lie. Um, and I got that Stentorian Motofo Ram box. Was selling MSRP at our local uh, vape shop was around fifty. I think they were selling them for sixty. And um, we found ours for 10 a piece online uh, at breezy.com. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Breezy.com is awesome for finding uh, things uh, on a budget. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I got this guy, dude. Like, it's an Indonesian squonk mod. And Ooh. They're not as expensive as you'd think. Like, really? Yeah, these are like 50 bucks. Like, if you get them oh, wow. when, they're, when they're doing a free shipping, if they're doing a free shipping promotion... You come out like a villain on this one because shipping from Indonesia is kind of expensive. But you, if you can get them on the on a sale like that, they're like fifty bucks. Not bad. And they hit hard for how little they are and everything. Man, this overpowered though. Oh yeah, uh, mine's in Kentucky right now, but I'm hoping to get it here sometime soon. Oh, is it in shipment? No, my buddy. Uh, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of Matthew Carruthers. Does, I have. Yeah, he does like the uh, patinaing on mods and things like that. Oh, okay. He's in the Stooge crew. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, uh, I sent it off to him, and uh, I'm waiting for hopefully get that soon. Really, again? Yeah, we lost everything again. Yeah. Well, they're, we're back. They could hear us right now. Oh, cool. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, we're kind of coming to the closing of the show anyways. It happened so fast. Uh, no, that hour went by pretty quick. I'm not going to lie. I, I just we looked down and I was like, again. holy crap, it's almost four. Right. All right. All right, guys. So thank you for joining us. Uh, Lethal, if there's anything you want to promote, buddy, have at it, man. Guys, thank you so much for joining us for the show. It's been great being here. Thank you very much, Clown, for uh, inviting me onto the show. It's been great talking with you. Um, yeah, guys, if you're interested in seeing more of me, please do head over to my YouTube channel, which uh, I did post the link for earlier. I'll post it again in just a little bit here. But uh, Or you can find me on Facebook or Instagram at Lethal Coils. Uh, that's what I've got. Again, thank you all. Thank you, Clown. It's been great here uh, spending some time with you. Yeah, I appreciate you making time for me, man. Seriously, I really do. Always, like, brother. You were, you were seriously next on the list. I was like, I got to get Lethal on, hang out, talk to <laughs> Coils, because I haven't had like a chance to talk Coils with anybody. Just done like a uh, juice talk for the last couple of weeks and stuff. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah, thanks, everybody. Uh, Vaping with the Omis tonight on the Vaping with the Omis channel. Go over there, uh, sub, hang out with us uh, later tonight, 7 p.m. CST. Uh, then, uh, yeah, go check out clownvapes.com. Anything I have on there, I still am working on a bunch of things, and hopefully I get my shit together. I've been, like, kind of slacking a little here and there. And uh, it's a lot of work to run a f website once you get down to it. <laughs> it really is, too. <laughs> no kidding. And uh, Wolf Bite on Saturdays at noon on Vape Radio and at 9 p.m. on Vape Radio uh, CST times. You guys adjust for whatever time zone you're in. Yeah, doing this whole vaping thing, you start learning time zones really hard. You're like, what What time zone are you in? <laughs> I, I can tell you right now, I'm five hours um, behind the UK. Yeah. Yeah, I'm six hours behind the UK. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. All right. So, yeah, thanks, everybody, for joining us, and uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Thank <laughs> you.